Hello and welcome to my uh, latest reading of this, the For Britain 2020 Manifesto. Now, it's been a while since I've done one of these and we've only got two to go, this one and uh, Energy and the Environment, which I'll do next week. Um, but then, over the summer, the manifesto is going to change. And it's going to change to reflect the current situation. We're in a, uh, a time none of us predicted, none of us could have seen coming. And particularly, and it's particularly relevant to this area of the manifesto, uh, we've particularly seen a bright shining light uh, aimed at China. And we need to alter our foreign policy in that regard, which we will do. <clears throat> now, regarding foreign policy, I do know that there are people who believe that we can put the uh, pull up the drawbridge and completely disconnect ourselves from the outside world. Uh, we simply aren't able to do that. Uh, the world we are first start, we are engaged in and contract to several international agreements, some of which are acceptable, many of which are not, and we ought to get out of. That's particularly the case for any uh, defence agreements we've entered with the European Union even since Brexit. Uh, but we can't, you know, look at, I can, I can take my phone out of my pocket and I can speak live to Australia uh, or, or anywhere else in the world. It's extraordinary how small the world has become. We have to live in 2020. We have to live in the real world. Now, what we will do is form an independent sovereign nation state with a relationship with other nation states. And it is that relationship that is encompassed within a foreign policy policy. So this is quite a long section of the manifesto. So I don't want this video to be extremely long. So I'm going to read it uh, and comment rarely now uh, because it is very long. Uh, but do uh, have a look. Any comments? Do let us know. Any ideas uh, for members? We will be. I will be polling members again over the summer for various different aspects of the new manifesto. Uh, but always feel free to send me in your ideas. Okay. So as I said, quite long. Um, but let's get through it. So for Britain has a forward-looking and positive foreign policy. As we move away from the constraints of EU membership, indeed, it is an opportunity for us to start again, to start everything again. Uh, we will ensure that we can once again trade and act independently as a free nation. That is indeed the core of the philosophy here. We want to be a free nation, independent and make our own decisions, but within the world. We can't escape the world. This determination to represent true democracy and the will of the electorate is at the heart of our beliefs and drives a pragmatic and realistic global strategy. Part of that is accountability to British citizens and their interests. The United Kingdom is already a powerful global economy. We remain so. For Britain observes that we have relied too heavily in the past on the financial sector. And although banking and finance are a large and important part of the UK economy, we believe that the UK should restore much of its manufacturing base, which has been offshore. Now, not all of it. Uh, I don't believe we ought to have a the manufacture of absolutely every little product. I do, however, believe that post-coronavirus, uh, we can learn to rein it in a little bit. I think many of us, our houses are filled with rather unnecessary uh, products and uh, uh, low, low value, low quality products uh, made in China uh, that we really could do without. And uh, we could do without certainly sending any of our, our factories or opening factories or funding factories in China. Uh, let's move to other countries uh, if we can, and 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 we can. Um, and but this isn't uh, yet in the manifesto, but it will be. There is no reason. Uh, now this is this is key, and, and in terms of what manufacturing we want to reintroduce to to the UK, there is no reason why we should not have a transport, steel, energy, and ship building industry. Uh, absolutely as well as a textiles and domestic electrical goods manufacturing capacity within the UK. Again, it doesn't have to be everything. And once again, we have seen how vulnerable we are with coronavirus and a lack of manufacturing here. We seem unable to even to produce protective clothing for our own medical staff and indeed medical equipment. Uh, and if we can, it doesn't match with NHS specifications, which I find 
Really rather, rather bizarre. We are a nation of around 65 million, all of whom need clothes and food and as many goods as possible. Are, are, well, we must ensure that as many goods as possible for our, our necessity are produced in the UK. Once we re-establish a strong manufacturing base, this will in turn inevitably lead to more exports and trade internationally. Put simply, we need to make and sell things not only globally but internally. For Britain accepts that security is often achieved through global cooperation and here is a key uh, facet that we simply can't ignore in terms of being present in the world. Uh, the great many of the great threats we are subject to are not at home many are at home but many are abroad and for this we need relationships and friendships with other countries to help keep us safe here in britain for britain will however never go to war nor deploy defense assets unless it is beyond doubt that such actions are in the interest of the uk or in line with our NATO obligations. We will cooperate with international law and intelligence agencies in so much as this serves the security interests of the UK and its citizens. Crucially, foreign criminals will be deported. Furthermore, anyone engaged in terrorism who is not a British citizen will be deported, with the costs involved levied against the individual and their country of origin. And engaged in terrorism, yes, we do mean uh, jihadism, and, and even if it is non-violent jihadism, uh, it is a threat to us, our way of life, and if they're not British citizens, they are not afforded uh, the right to come here and, and stir up uh, opposition to our democratic order. They'll be deported. Lots of people need to be deported. Uh, Forbidden believes that the UN in its current form is a globalist political lobbying group. I think that goes without saying. Uh, we will hold a review of the terms of our membership with the possibility of leaving the EU if it does not reform its current political agenda. It is a open border, uh, anti-Western, hypocritical, extraordinarily hypocritical uh, organisation. Uh, I, we go on to say we will not tolerate international bodies dictating to the UK and we ought not to when they think, especially when they think it reasonable to appoint Saudi Arabia to lead on uh, on human rights. We are not so foolish as to tolerate such hypocrisies, nor are we going to follow... Uh, uh, nor are we going to allow or follow legislation that does not derive from the British democratic process. For Britain will not allow foreign powers, businesses or organisations to build or operate places of worship or engage in religious or political gatherings on British soil that are deemed against the interests of democracy and the accepted norms of a free society. Uh, this is a part of the uh, paradox of liberty in that you must in, at times behave counterintuitively where liberty is concerned in order to protect liberty in the long run uh, and in wider society. Now, what this means is that we remove the liberty of those who are not British citizens who are using free speech, for example, to engage in uh, attacks on the British way of life. Uh, this, of course, is refers to various mosques, Saudi-funded or otherwise, but if they are preaching the overthrow of British democracy, and they are not citizens, we owe them no duties at all. Furthermore, those places already built will be reviewed and any found to be proselytising against the interests of the UK and its accepted freedoms and democracy will be closed down. This amounts to, such proselytising amounts to encouraging the overthrow of British democracy. For Britain will review the laws regarding treason and prosecute those guilty of willful collaboration with a foreign power to the detriment of the UK and its interests. Be in no doubt that those who have done so in recent history will be held to account and face the full weight of the law. This will include an examination of the role civil servants have played in the offshoring of British legislative, trade and security interests, in particular during the Brexit process. And we need to look at the civil service in general. Uh, this is part of what many people refer to as deep state. This is the part of the state that doesn't change every general election. And it is indeed a very, very powerful part of the state, um, which has in many ways far more power than those sitting in parliament. All use of taxpayers' money to fund, fund foreign aid will stop immediately. That speaks for itself and that is non-negotiable. We're giving £14 billion away in foreign aid every year while our own elderly are choosing between eating it eating and heating 
absolutely unacceptable. Uh, there is, however, uh, an exception to this. We will provide assistance in times of emergencies. We will carry out a review of the use of foreign aid over the past decade and in particular the actions of the Department for International Development and the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. We want to know what's been going on all these years and we have a right to know. The UK's relationship with its friends and neighbours is vital to our well-being and we respect and value our international relationships and obligations and we must. We are a part of the world, we are a responsible part of the world and like everyone we need friends, we need as our allies. For an individual, friendships are vital to well-being and for a, a nation as well. For Britain will reaffirm the UK's warm relationship with the United States and the values upon which it is built. Now this does not make us a 51st state. This makes us friends with the United States. Uh, and I think we should be friends. I personally, uh, personally, this is not policy, but personally I'm, I'm, I'm quite pro-America, quite strongly pro-America in fact. Uh, it doesn't mean I, I like everything about America. Um, but I do like its constitution and I do want it instead, rather than China or Russia, um, I do want the United States to remain the world's leading power. Um, and I'm, I worry about it being taken over by China. The world would be a very different place. Uh, for Britain will recognise Israel's right to defence and the reality that Hamas and others are driven to wage war against Israel on the basis of religious and anti-Semitic hatred. We will recognise the Jerusalem as the Israeli, uh, Israeli capital. Now, of course, the far right goes ape about this. Absolutely ape. What has Israel got to do with anything? Why is Israel... Look, first of all, we mentioned three countries which we uh, um, express our friendship with. And one of them is Israel. And, and there are several reasons for this. A lot on the far right don't actually see. They're so obsessed with Jews and with hating Jews and with spreading ridiculous, untrue, zero evidence for it whatsoever, uh, conspiracies about Israel and about Jews. Uh, that's one reason to stand up for Israel, frankly. Um, another reason is the intelligence it provides to the UK. Uh, the, another reason is that the front line against jihad, the far right is so obsessed with Jew hatred, it doesn't take jihadism seriously. Jihad, whether it be non-violent via Muslim Brotherhood front groups or whether it be violent, uh, uh, blowing up children in a concert in Manchester, Israel is vital to the global fight against jihad and when donald trump recognized jerusalem the ancient capital of the jewish people it was their capital before islam or palestine was ever even thought about uh, to recognize that was a massive massive slap in the face frankly to global jihad uh, it is a it's it's necessary in this fight and israel is also necessary in this fight. Plus, I think it is only fair to recognise that Israel is up against Hamas and Hamas is not concerned about land. Land's, uh, land is not Hamas. Look at Israel, it's tiny. It's tiny. Uh, uh, this, is not, this is not about land and, and previous broken agreements have proven it. This is about religion. This is about religion-inspired hatred of Jews. They say it in their very, Hamas says it in its very founding documents. That needs to be recognised. It's only fair that we recognise what that Israel is actually facing religious genocide. For Britain recognised the plight of white farmers in South Africa and that they are subjected to racist discrimination and abuse. This is uh, this I, I can't put it any clearer than that. South Africa, white South Africans are subjected to legal racist discrimination and abuse, and we believe that such people should be offered asylum. For Britain will carry out an immediate review of UK diplomatic missions overseas. We will replace any diplomatic staff who we suspect of or find to have been working against British interests. And these individuals will be prosecuted if found to have willfully acted against the interests of the UK. This includes those who have willfully funded Hamas, Palestinian terrorist organisations or African dictatorships or their associates. It will also include those who have directed cash to vanity projects with no real value to the UK or its interests. In short, I didn't write this, but I love this sentence. In short, we won't just drain the swamp, we will concrete over it. 
British embassies will return to their core job of protecting and serving British citizens and businesses overseas and in particular offering consular and trade support. Bizarrely, this is a role the Foreign Office has outsourced with catastrophic consequences. In addition, foreign staff employed in mission, missions overseas will be considerably reduced in number where practical. The Ponzi-like practice of employing legions of locally sourced staff in jobs or functions UK staff could do with less manpower and more efficiency will stop. UK foreign policy over the past decade has been naive at best and willfully destructive at worst. Uh, this incompetence... Although leading to many knighthoods has not led to a safer UK, nor has it led to more trade or influence globally. We have subserviently doffed our caps and followed the EU and UN through disaster after disaster. This has included the offshoring of thousands of UK industries and jobs, as well as, as involvement in foreign wars that has led, in part, to the immigration crisis we see now. Our understanding of the Middle East and Africa has been almost 180 degrees wrong. We have followed warped aspirational goals of what we would like the world to be like, rather than a pragmatic understanding of the global reality. I absolutely uh, love that. Uh, and I am you know, consistent in stating we have to live in the world as it actually is. And it's a criticism I often make actually of left-wingers, extreme left-wingers, who live in a, in a world where countries don't exist. They think they can just wipe away culture and, and history and, and heritage and cultural and social development over thousands upon thousands of years and just bring down the borders and we'll all be A-OK. -okay. They live in a world of their fantasy rather than as it actually re exists. We must live in the real world. For Britain will practice a realistic and effective foreign policy that serves the interests of the United Kingdom and its citizens. We have a fully accountable we will have a fully accountable and foreign Commonwealth service and review and prosecute those who have in the past or seek now to harm our country, its people and its traditions. We will manufacture goods and trades with the world in a global marketplace free of restraints or interference from those not of these islands. We will follow a forward looking and dynamic foreign policy for Britain and the uh, points. Uh, so, for Britain will not go to war nor deploy defence assets at the behest of a foreign power unless it is beyond doubt that such actions are in the interests of the UK or an obligation to our NATO partners. We will cooperate with international law and intelligence agencies in so much as this serves the security interests of the UK and our citizens. We will deport foreign criminals, disallow foreign powers, businesses or organisations from building or operating places of worship or engaging in religious or political gatherings upon British soil that are against the interests of the uh, of democracy and the accepted norms of a free society. We will end foreign aid, accept in emergencies, carry out an immediate review of UK diplomatic missions overseas and return British embassies to their core job of protecting and serving British citizens and businesses overseas, in particular regarding consular and trade support. As I say, that is going to change. We are going to make a lot of additions uh, regarding China. What do we do about China? How do we start again post-coronavirus? Whatever post-coronavirus looks like it is. We've, of course, remember we're coming out of, of coronavirus, hopefully soon, and coming out of the European Union, hopefully soon. Fingers crossed. Uh, so we have an absolute, we're already out of the European Union, but uh, the, the, uh, the completion. <laughs> it's a time, it's, it's a chance, a real opportunity for a fresh start. And we must make these tough but fair pro-Britain changes at the start of this opportunity. That is what For Britain will do. We will take the best of our past, the best of our present and build a new pro-Britain future. That's our plan. Join us.